Hi, so what we're going to do today is we're going to see if we can understand just what a magic number is in baseball. Many of us uh, who are baseball fans understand the idea of a magic number uh, is one that's critical as the season is winding down. It is the number that your team, uh, it's a, it helps understand when your team can clinch the title for the division of baseball that you're playing in. So the first place team right now is the Los Angeles Dodgers in the National League West, and Giants are in second place. So the question is, is the Dodgers magic number being 28? What does this mean, and how is it calculated? So some of us may know what it means, but does someone, anyone want to tell me how it's calculated? Crickets? Yeah, it's not, not many people know how to calculate. And in this video, we're going to explain it a little bit, and then we will show you how to calculate it. So without further ado, let's, uh, cut, over to, uh, let's cut over to our magic tablet, uh, where we are going to do a little bit of math. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is there's this website, www.playoffmagic.com, where you can go and you can figure out what the magic number for any team is. Uh, in baseball, and it turns out that there's a magic number between the first place team and every other team uh, in the division, and the magic number for the Dodgers, uh, with relative to the San Francisco Giants right now, is 28. This is the number that of do a combination of Dodger wins or San Francisco losses that will lock up the National League West for the Dodgers and guarantee that they come in first place. And the question is, is how is this number 28? Um, calculated. Uh, so let's look at that. Let's, uh, let's, let's create, first of all, we're going to create some variables that are going to come to our uh, advantage as we uh, an analyze this situation, uh, as we analyze the situation. Let's use Dodger Blue, and we're going to call 73, and we're going to call this the number of wins for the Dodgers, the number of wins they have right now. And, and likewise, we'll look at this 57 and we'll call this the number of losses for the Dodgers. The other variable that we're, the variables that we're going to need to know are this number, 69, which is uh, the number of wins for the Giants as of right now. And today is, is, is 9 one fifteen before the Giants and the Dodgers play on September 1st. Uh, this number, 62, is the current number of losses losses for the Giants. Okay, so let's talk now about what we know is true of the of, of the Dodgers clinching the division uh, of the of the division title. For them to clinch the division title, then that means that the maximum, sorry, the minimum number of Dodger wins possible must be greater than the maximum number of Giants wins possible. So When it's true that the minimum number of Dodger wins is greater than the most games that the Giants can possibly win, um, and when this is true, then the Dodgers have, when this is true, this is equivalent to saying, when this is true, when true, the Dodgers clinch. Okay, so let's look at this. The minimum number of wins the Dodgers can have. So what is the minimum number of wins they can have this entire season? Well, the minimum number would be the number of wins they'd have if they lost all of the rest of their games. So that would be the wins that the Dodgers have now. That is the minimum number of Dodger wins. Now, what is the most wins that the Giants can have? So let's write that. The most number of games that the Giants can win is their current number of wins 
because they already have those. But let's add that to the games left. So if all of their remaining games, they win them, we'll add that to the number of games they currently win, and this will be the most games that they can win. And if that game, and if the Dodgers wins are greater than that amount, then we, the Dodgers have clinched. So let's see if we can break this out a little bit more. The number of games left, let's write down uh, another truth in baseball, and that is for the last many years, there are 162 games per season. 162 games in a season. Okay, so the number of games that the Giants have left then is 162 minus the number of games they've played. Right, so if, if they've played 69 and 62 games, if they've played um, 131 games, then they have 31 games remaining. And the way that's calculated, again, is 162 minus 69 minus 62. So let's write that in. So the games left is 162 minus the games won minus the games, whoops, minus the lost games for the Giants. And then we'll pull down our games one. Okay, so let's see if we can wrap our heads around this for a second. And let's just stop and see what we've done, because we've actually proved a lot. So again, if the, uh, the Dodgers wins, which are represented by this, this is, if we can agree that this is the minimum number of games they can win, and we can agree that this is the maximum number of games the Giants win, if this is ever true, just like this first sentence, because all of this is equivalent. So when this is true, then the Dodgers have clinched. So let's look. We can actually simplify this equation further because we have two terms here that are going to cancel when we simplify the right side of this algebraic inequality. So if the games one minus the games one is, is zero, so we can cancel those out, and we can say that on the right side we have 162 minus the Giants' losses. And on the right side we have the games won by the Dodgers. So when the games won by the Dodgers is greater than 162 minus the games that the Giants have lost, then we have clinched. Okay, let's re re rewrite this a little bit further. I'm going to quit with the colors for a second, and I'm just going to go, well, the wins of the Dodgers, and if I add L, the losses of the Giants to both sides of this equation, on the right side I have the wins of the Dodgers plus the losses of the Giants is greater than 162. Okay, and now let me, let me go one further and let's subtract 162 from both sides. And we come up with the, the wins of the Dodgers plus the loss of the Giants minus 162 is greater than zero. Let's take this up to the right side over here and copy it down. The wins of the Dodgers plus the losses of the Giants minus 162 is greater than zero. When this becomes true, it's equivalent to everything we've written so far, and so it's equivalent to the Dodgers clinching when this, when this inequality is true. So let me, con let me argue that right now the number of Dodgers wins plus the Giants losses, which is 73 plus 62, which is 135 minus 162, that's a negative number, so that's not greater than zero. So the, Do the Dodgers have not clinched. But when this number becomes greater than zero, what is the first number that will be true when this number is greater than zero? This number will become a one. So when the wins of the Dodgers plus the losses of the Giants minus 162, when that equals one, then this left side will be one, and the right side will be zero, and I'll have a true sentence. And so this will be that the Dodgers clinch, okay?
it's a little bit maybe of a hand wave, but I think that you, if you think about it for a second, you'll understand that this is, this is indeed an equivalent, uh, that, that, that the logic must hold. Okay, so let's figure out, like, when is this true? Well, this is true when the, we can add, um, let's, let's do some finagling of the math here. And let's take 162 up to both sides. Let's add 162. We're just going to do some, use our addition property of equality, and we'll say, well, the wins of the Dodgers plus the losses of the Giants. Now, when that equals 163, We've also, the Dodgers, this is also, because this means the Dodgers clinched, and this also means that the Dodgers have clinched. So let's look. Again, 73 plus 62, uh, we're still at 135, so the Dodgers have not clinched. But to get from 135 to 163 is, uh, we do our math and we get 28. There we go. And so there we have, if we look back over here on the left, we see that the magic number is indeed 28. So one way of calculating this magic number is the number of additional wins and losses that the, the, the wins for the Dodgers, the losses for the Giants, if the additional wins and losses adds to 163, then we have our magic number. So another way of looking at it is, is our current wins plus our current losses for the Giants. And then we add to that the future wins for the Dodgers and add to that the future losses of the Giants. When that equals 163, then we've hit our magic number. And this, this here, this piece here is that magic number. It's how many more wins and losses need to happen to get these wins and losses up to 163. So let's rewrite this equation just a little bit more. And let's just write it in a different color because it's going to be our final our final piece, 163 minus the current wins minus the current losses of the Giants, um, when that equals the future wins of the Dodgers plus the future losses of the Giants, then we've hit our magic number. So this here is the also the magic number, and this is our formula to calculate it. There we go. So there you have it. Uh, come on. There we go. And so we can use this tomorrow night. So if, if the Dodgers win and the Giants lose because the Dodgers beat the Giants, the magic number will no longer be 28, but the magic number will drop to 26. On the other hand, if the if the, if the Dodgers lose and the, the Giants win, it doesn't affect this formula at all, so the magic number will remain at 28. Okay, so I hope this uh, video helped you uh, understand the, how to calculate. I hope this uh, helped you understand how we calculate magic numbers and understand why the magic number is 163 minus your team's wins minus the other team's losses. And that you can calculate that now in the future. And we track down as the Giants and the Dodgers race for the pennant. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you. Um, 
this presentation. Uh, we can talk more about it in class, or you can send me send me email, dlipscomb at stsimon.org.